here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. I end up drooling all over the uh, the website because it's just fun, cool stuff. Joining me right now is uh, Tyler Patner from Pyramid Air. Uh, this is the outfit that uh, they've got all the cool air guns and everything else. Tyler, how are you, sir? Good, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Okay, I'm already. I'm already went to the website. I'm already clicking on things. Going, okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> it's like you know. All right, I like. That. And you know, the other part of it is. I learned something every time I, I go there. I just, okay, I'm just going to share this with you. I'm going on your website. I clicked on, what is this? The Benjamin Trail NPXL Air Rifle. Fairly affordable. Sure. Cause, I mean, there are air rifles that are over 1000 bucks. This one's 299 But then I'm reading this. It says it's very quiet. And I'm, this is what I'm going to ask you about. It says, um, but be aware that if you use lightweight pellets, they could end up going faster than the speed of sound, and it's going to be louder, just like we would with 22s if you go high velocity, low velocity. I never even imagined the idea that you got to stay subsonic with pellets. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, a pellet is not made to shoot over the speed of sound. Uh, actually, just the shape of it, kind of that, like, shuttlecock uh, style that, that uh, you know, pellet is formed after almost like a badminton, you know, right. uh, shuttlecock is not, it destabilizes so quickly when you push it over the speed of sound uh, huh. and it, it will actually begin to tumble. So not something you typically want to do, but something, especially with what we would consider the trail NPXL, an ultra magnum Springer gas piston gun, or even some of your more powerful pre-charged pneumatics, you know, it's something right. you absolutely have to consider you know, you definitely want to be using a heavier projectile so you keep it subsonic, keep it nice and quiet, and it also helps your accuracy and knockdown power, too. All right, let's talk about that for a second. The idea that, you know, for a lot of us, we think, well, a pellet's a pellet's a pellet. And you're saying using heavier ones or lighter ones. What are we looking at with a range of pellets now? Sure. So if you were talking about 22 caliber, probably the most popular caliber for that particular gun, you know, you can go anywhere from about 12, 11, 12 grains, all the way up to over 30 grains. Um, so you have this huge uh, disparity in terms of pellet weight. Uh, for a gun like that, though, really any break barrel for that matter, um, regardless of whether it's an ultra magnum or kind of a standard powered gun, you know, I would tell you to stay within about 16 to 21 grains or so. That's going to be a sweet spot for something like that. So what would a gun, I mean, and we'll talk about some of the others. This is just one I just picked randomly, just said, you know, this is uh, maybe an entryway, something on that $300 range might get somebody into this. It's quiet. What would this be good for? So you're really looking at small game, and, and with the 25 caliber, you might be able to eke up into some short-range medium game stuff, you know, like uh, if you have a small coyote problem, things mm -hmm. like that, um, you know, and if you're obviously a competent shot, and you know, you can put one between the eye and the ear, you know, you're right. going to be in great shape. Um, it, it's a little borderline if you were to go past 25 or 30 yards, in my opinion. Um, but really, like, the 22, 25 calibers are going to shine for your squirrels, rabbits, uh, chipmunks, pest birds, things like that. Probably should take this time uh, an opportunity to say, look, check your local regs, because in most, a lot of places you, you're okay shooting air guns in your backyard and everything. Obviously, all the safety rules apply. But there are some jurisdictions, some cities with your city limits, where you cannot even shoot an air gun in your backyard, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. It is a good idea to check. And, and if you are looking to go hunting or even, you know, what you can take on your own property, we do actually have an air gun hunting map on our website uh, in our mm -hmm. air gun resources section that can be really helpful. And if you're looking to get into other kinds of hunting as well, whether that be, you know, deer or fur bears, whatever you're looking to go after, we do have, I'd like to think we do a pretty good job, at least, of keeping the map up to date with different state regs and all of that. Um, so it should give you a good good idea of what you can and cannot do with an air gun in your state. Did, did you just say hunting deer with an air gun? Absolutely. Talk to me about that. What, what, what is that? <laughs> so really, uh, one of the things that's come up more and more frequently over the last couple of years uh, is kind of what we consider big bore air gun efficacy for hunting. Um, and, and, you know, people have been hunting with big bore air guns for 
probably the last 20 years or so. And when we say big bores, we're talking 35 caliber and larger. Mm. Um, but, but really in the last five years or so, we've seen a number of manufacturers come to the plate with uh, just truly very powerful air guns. We're talking about 45 and 50 caliber guns uh, that are capable of 700 plus foot pounds of energy. Uh, and, and I don't need to tell you, but maybe some of the listeners don't know, you know, we're talking more power uh, at the muzzle than most of your center fire pistols are going to produce. Oh, yeah, because a forty five automatic, you're looking at 400, 450 foot pounds. And yep. so you're talking about more than 50 percent more powerful. You're actually in the area, you're actually more powerful than even the 10 millimeter uh, yep. pistols with that level. And no one would argue that you could not hunt deer with that. So, wow, holy cow, that's exactly. amazing. Yeah, exactly. And and that's, you know, part of uh, kind of education in general with air guns right now is that there are a lot more of these big boy air guns coming out. Uh, and it does require a little bit of education um, for kind of the general shooter or general hunter even, because it's not Personally, I don't consider this something that you're going to go out and take a 150-yard shot on a deer with. Um, you know, it, it doesn't no. have the power, pr probably, but it, personally, I don't really find that to be where they shine. You know, you're looking at more of your archery distances, you know, maybe up to 50 or 60 yards max uh, with right. a lot of these on, on a deer-sized animal. Uh, hmm. And I do know people that have taken, you know, deer farther than that with a big boy air gun. But for, for me, that's where I would be comfortable um, and still, you have tons of power that's going to be able to put that deer down without an issue. Yeah, I'd be thinking ranges that you would think of either for archery or if you're handgun hunting. Uh, yeah. And that uh, out to 50, maybe 60 depends, but you'd have the power for that. Now, I will say, I mean, these are not like your, your granddad's daisies. These are serious guns that are very accurate, obviously very powerful. And, you know, they're pretty expensive because they're precision instruments. They can be. You know, you can get into a big bore for hunting. Uh, it's not going to be a 700-foot-pound model, but you can get into a big bore that's going to be capable of deer-sized game for about six or $700 right now. Hmm. Um, okay. Now, bear in mind, we're talking about PCPs or precharged pneumatics, which do require an external source to put air into them. Right. So you're either looking at a tank, a hand pump, or a compressor, um, a personal compressor, not like your shop compressor at home, of course. Uh, right, most right. of these, yeah, you're talking at least 3,000 psi for the folks at home. Uh, so that, that's a lot of pressure. Um, but you know, certainly something that is uh, more readily available and easier to use than ever before. Hey, Tyler, I'm gonna get you a hold a second here because I want to talk a little bit about the idea of using uh, some of these air guns, the handguns that are out there to substitute for the carry gun and, and the practice you get there. We're talking uh, with Tyler from Pyramid Air. Check it out. Pyramid is P-Y-R-A-M-Y-D Air. P-I, it's wise, all wise. P-Y-R-A-M-Y-D, pyramidair.com. We'll be right back. Hey, we're talking with Tyler from Pyramid Air. It's kind of your one-stop shop place online for all things air guns, pistols, rifles, all the rest of it. Tyler, I kind of teased it going into it. But one of the things I like the idea of, especially with the cost of ammo these days, is uh, using these air gun, whether it's pellet, BB, or airsoft replicas of maybe the pistols that you're carrying, whether it's a revolver or a semi-auto. You might talk a little bit about just how good these are in terms of matching, you know, weight, design, you know, everything else. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, really something that we have been trying to uh, kind of branch out and tell more folks about right now, uh, especially, as you said, with the cost of ammo, you know, it's higher than ever before, really. You know, the air guns themselves, these, most of them are CO2-powered pistols. Um, they are true one-to-one -one scale replicas, fit in your holsters, fit the same accessories, uh, whatever you have, it'll work with it. Um, the great thing about a lot of them, though, especially some of the more expensive ones, and for the folks at home, when I say expensive, we're talking about like 100 bucks or so, so not terribly expensive in right. the grand scheme of things. But we're talking about guns that, that have what we call blowback, which is mimicking your slide reciprocation, you know, as, as that it ejects mm. the round and loads another. Um, obviously, we have no round to eject with a BB or pellet pistol, but that slide still coming back and forth really gives you that authentic feel. And while it's never going to be like a nine millimeter, or 380, you know, whatever you carry, it, it does give you that little bit of, uh, you know, a kick 
to get that muscle memory going, get you to clamp mm-hmm. down on the gun a little bit and reacquire those sites. So from a training perspective, it's doing the same things. I mean, and they are, as you say, one-to-one. They fit in your holster. They work the same. They have the same controls. And I'm just looking at the lineup. I mean, you got Walters, you got Smiths, you got 1911s, you got, uh, you know, a lot of different SIGs. P365 is a Glock 19. You got, you know, it's just mm-hmm. whatever you're carrying, there's probably an air gun for it. And I know people say, well, gee, what well, I really want to pay $100 for an air gun. And I just say, look, all right, go shoot 200 rounds of 9 millimeter and come back and talk to me about the cost. You you know, yep. you could basically shoot this thing for free. After the the first day of shooting it, you're shooting it for free versus ammo cost. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. You know, you're talking about you need CO2, um, so like 20, 25 bucks for 40 CO2 cartridges. And on one CO2 cartridge, in most of these guns, you're talking about over 50 shots worth. So, you know, just to correlate it back to, you know, a box of ammo, right? That's how many rounds you're going to get for okay. 20, 20 to $40 right now for 9 mil. Um, so it's, it's up there. Yeah. Um, and, and when we talk about the ammo itself, you know, if you look at the cost of BBs, you're talking about being able to get five or 6,000, and yes, I said 1,000, steel BBs for 10 to 12 bucks. Um, oh, my if you, Yeah, <laughs> if, if you did want to shoot, um, you know, in your basement or something or your garage, we even have frangible uh, BBs that are called dust doubles. They're awesome. Oh, wow. Um, and, th- and those are 1,500 rounds a box for about 10 bucks still. So it, it's from an ammo cost perspective, you're talking pennies on the dollar when you compare it with center fire rounds. Yeah, and there's just there's still no substitute for pulling the trigger. Now, Tyler, I apologize, sir, and I'll get you in here. I always start with all these questions. And I think later on I'm thinking, I didn't actually give Tyler a chance to talk. You may have actually had something you came here to talk about. I have no idea what it is, but I'll, I'll give you the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things, uh, you know, this is new for us. We, we previously, you know, we're a one-stop shop for everything air gun. We are uh, actually branching into crossbows right now as well. Uh, so we, we, are, we are carrying a ton of different brands of crossbows, uh, Ten Point, Wicked Ridge, Center Point, Raven, Killer Instinct, uh, Excalibur, just to name a few. We've got a few more as well. So all the accompanying accessories. Really, you know, for us, we wanted to give more of our customers an opportunity to get into the woods hunting because, uh, you know, as we kind of talked about hunting with air guns earlier, you know, only 20, 22 states or so right now have uh, big game hunting regs on the books for air guns. And obviously that is growing, uh, grew by a few states last year even, and it will continue to grow. But we wanted to reach more people and, uh, you know, give them the opportunity to uh, not only have a good experience shopping online, uh, but also have those opportunities to further their endeavors in the woods, in the, you know, out in the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what it's all about for us. So, yeah, that, that's the you know one thing I wanted to bring up just to let the folks at home know. You know, we've got uh, all sorts of different crossbows and, and accessories for them now. God, that sounds terrific. And so you got uh, for those who haven't been there, I, I would encourage them to run over there. Pyramid Air is P Y R A M Y D Pyramid Air dot com. Uh, everything from hunting air guns to the just fun stuff that you can shoot real fast. Uh, you know, and, and some fairly inexpensive stuff if you want to get into it that way. But just you got this incredible range. Uh, are the manufacturers coming out with more air guns all the time? Of course, yeah. That, it's one of those things where uh, the development never stops. Obviously, with uh, the logistics issues that kind of COVID has brought up, and uh, you know you got ships waiting on either coast to dock and unload right. everything. You know, you know whether it's a, a gun from Germany or, or, you know, China, Taiwan, wherever it may be coming from, uh, you know, it's, it's been harder to get than ever before. But that hasn't stopped a lot of manufacturers from coming out with new products. Um, it, most of the development we're seeing right now is in that pre-charge pneumatic area, just mm-hmm. because we, we've seen a lot more uh, guns come in at a lower cost to try and get mm-hmm. more people into it. Um, so guns like the Air Venturi Avenger, the Umarex Origin, uh, the Origin or the I'm sorry, the Umarex Gauntlet 2 just came out as well, which is kind of their first real economical PCP. They've now uh-huh. built on it and made it more powerful, and uh, so that's been really cool to see as well. Uh, you got a few others out there in that lower priced uh, space, but you know it's certainly not just there. We got a lot of higher end manufacturers like FX Air Guns and Air Arms and Rapid Air Weapons um, that are also you know coming to the table with new models all the time. So. There's, it's, it's a wonderful wide world of air guns right now, and uh, you know the influx of folks that we've seen 
uh, in the last 18 months or so has been uh, probably shocked at the amount of stuff that's out there. <laughs> well, and just fun stuff. Tyler, thank you for bringing us up to speed with what's going on in this world. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thanks for having All right. me. All right. You, you take care. PyramidAir.com. Take a look at it. I'm, yeah, I'm actually looking at it right now. There's a 1911. Yeah, I could get that. I'm using The holster I'm using right now. Uh, it's not quite a GT25. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm just having fun.